ago I read a story called One. Do you remember any of you remember that? About numbers? It was about one. Well this is a story called Two. So let's see what uh, it's about two. Two was a playful number. She was curved on the top, straight on the bottom, and friendly and warm like the sun. Her best friend was one. Whenever they'd get the chance, they'd dance. She'd sing and snap, he'd tappity-tap. What a pair they made. At the end of each day, they'd always say, one, two, I'll count on you. Till the end, we'll be best friends. Until three jumped in between them. You two are like glue, said three, poking fun. Shake things up. Come and play with me, one. Odds are better than the rest, but one and three are best. <coughs> two felt a shift. She watched one slowly drift away from her. Two felt left out. Can I play too, she asked. You've had your time to play with one, answered three. We're playing odds only right now. Two was blue. What did I do? One left without a word. Is it because I'm even and they're both odd? Let it go, said zero. Just ignore them, said four. But two couldn't let go. At every turn, what did she see? One playing with three. One, three, odds will be, they'd say. Two felt a little green. Her heart felt sick and she began to crack. The evens rushed over to comfort their friend. Such a shame things aren't the same. Three is silly, said four. One can't be best friends with three. It's unlucky, said six. One and three are just plain odd. Let's get even with those odds, exclaimed eight. Five, seven, and nine overheard the chatter. What's the matter? There's nothing wrong with being odd. Evens are great, stated four, six, and eight. Sometimes even greater than the odds. Zero saw the numbers collide. Why did everyone need to take sides? Five, seven, nine, we're all odd and we're just fine, shouted the odds. Four, six, eight, being even is first rate, yelled the evens. Zero watched this hullabaloo. She raced over to two. The numbers are dividing. Now the odds are at odds with the evens, and the evens want to get even with the odds. <laughs> two felt split. But what can I do? She asked. Half of me doesn't care about that odd pair. Maybe it's time for me to be done with one. That's the smaller side of you talking, said Zero. You're greater than that. The evens and odds are in a fight. What if you can make things right? Can you find it in your heart to see a new angle to this, possibly? Two thought and thought and then, you're right, she exclaimed, flipping herself around. It is in me. I can be less than I've been or greater than I am. The choice is mine. Two pulled herself together and stood up tall. I have something to say to you all, she said. It's not easy to say, but I've come to see. It's tricky to dance when there are three. One should have other friends, and the same goes for me. Three drooped. I'm sorry, too, he said. 
I see now that playing the odds wasn't fair to you. Well, here's where we can all agree, said two. When the dance turns and shifts, let's groove and flow. If you're holding too tight, let go. Dance to your own beat, do your own thing. Be free to explore what the new day can bring. Explore, cheered four. Dance and mix, said six. Rock and roll, said seven. Shake it up, they shouted. Soon all the numbers were dancing together, moving and grooving, shimmying and shaking and spinning around like tops. It's fun to dance with everyone, said the numbers. Two spun faster and faster, round and round. She got so dizzy that, oops, she bumped into one. He teetered and toppled and almost fell down, but two caught him. Sorry, said two. Me too, said one. Both said nothing for a while, then one said softly, Hey, two, can I still count on you? Two looked at one and said, It's the end, and guess what? We're still friends. <laughs> Twelve. I wonder what it feels like to have a really good friend. I wonder what that feels like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know? Yes. And I wonder how it feels to be left out. Wait, with the nine and the one together, it looks like they're making a 12 together. They're making yeah. a 12 together, yeah. <laughs> I think there were more than there was a twelve. Heart in it. There was a heart. Yeah. Yeah. Go back to yeah. With the two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, I love this story because, it, it, for me, it's about how important it is to have lots of people in our lives. And I don't know how many of you saw the online this week, but I thought it was great that there was this poem in it that had been written for Remembrance Day, and it's written by Hannah, who's right here with us. And I think there's nothing better than hearing a poem read by the person who wrote it. And you're willing to do that for us, Hannah? I'm just going to get the mic. And you probably don't have it memorized, so I'll give you the words. Do you want me to hold this? Or can you hold it? You have to hold it close, remember. He sounds like by Hannah Volodakis. He sounds like the dawn course melody of loons on a lake. He sounds like the soft waves lapping against a boat. He sounds like nature humming in the wind. He sounds like the purring of my cat, Tammy. He sounds like the quiet cluck of my chicken, Blueberry. He sounds like the peaceful pitter-patter of the rain outside my bedroom window. He sounds like the voice of my dad reading adventure novels to me. He sounds like the crackling of fire while I roast marshmallows with my family and friends. He sounds like the whispering wind whisking across the grass. He sounds like the violin chirping songs of crickets on a warm summer night. He sounds like everything around you, if you just listen. Wow, thank you. Very good. <laughs> that was great. So let's, um, let's end this part of our time by singing Like a Rock, and then you're welcome to go off to uh, Children's Church.